Crips. Give us a sign if you are familiar with the name of Mr. Thomas Quick. Holy Is that you? Ooh, it just got different in here. Did somebody sit in one of these seats? I'm feeling... The like, spider webs? I have chills and I'm feeling cobwebs on my freaking elbow. Behind us, Behind yeah. us, like, almost like... Ah! Pennsylvania, nestled within the Delaware Valley. At one time, this used to be the summer getaway for the New York City elite. And back in the silent film era, stars like Lillian Gish made movies here. Couldn't be a more beautiful place, but I'll tell you what, we're here for the darker side. Here we are standing at the former gravesite of Tom Quick, a name that used to instill fear in this frontier town. Now, Tom Quick was the son of a Dutch immigrant to this area, raised in the white culture, the Native American culture. He actually picked up the nickname White Indian because of his experience with hunting, trapping, and the Native American language. The French and Indian War was a time when those peaceful days were over. Influenced by the French, the Lenny Lenape, wanted to stop and were afraid of their lost hunting grounds and it became open season upon the whites. Folklore has it that Tom Quick, Tom Quick Sr. and Tom Jr.'s brother-in-law were out collecting wood. They crossed a frozen Delaware River where they're ambushed by a small group of Native Americans. They open fire. Tom Quick Sr. is mortally wounded. Tom Quick Jr and his brother-in-law, seeing his father in a state and situation that he is in, continue to drag him to safety. Unfortunately, his father begs his son, leave, save yourself. Once under the cover of safety, Tom Quick Jr. watches a horrific event. He actually watches his own father being scalped by the Native Americans. Something happened that day. Something awoke in his heart. Some say it was the devil. From that day on, Tom Quick Jr. places open season on the Native American population in the surrounding area. For the next 40 years, the Native Americans lived in fear because of the vendetta Tom Quick placed on their necks. Over the next 40 years, 99 Native Americans, according to folk folklore, will lose their lives. On his deathbed, dying of smallpox, Thomas Quick is surrounded by friends. He begs them to bring in one more elderly Native American so that he could make it 100. Now, we don't know whether it was all the blood spilled in this area, the injustices brought upon the Native American population, whether it's the energy brought by this water source here. But what we do know is that TLC Salon has a very interesting history with claims of voices, spirit activity. We don't know what's gonna to happen tonight. Only night knows what she has in store for us. So let's get set up. Here we are. Well, well, thank you guys for having us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the building that you uh, own here? Um, the building is, uh, there's, was built in 1840. Um, we, 
asked you to come today because we had some instances in here that we thought may be ghost related. Um, one of the happenings was during a Milford Music Festival and I was working on a client who said I had nice perfume on and I wasn't wearing any perfume and my, then my father had said that he smelled perfume and there was no per, nobody was wearing any perfume. Um, I also had some girls that were working uh, one came in one morning and thought they heard children upstairs laughing okay. and they went upstairs and there was nobody here yet. Uh, so there was um, some instances of that. And then I had another girl working here who said that she had worked in an old train station in um, Newton and had ghosts haunting her there. Okay. And then she came to work for me. <laughs> And she said that she thought that she had followed, they had followed her here. Okay. So um, while she was working for me, I have to say that I was, I did not like to be left uh, uh, as the last one here. Okay. I didn't feel comfortable. Now did it feel that someone was watching you, a heavy feeling, yeah, a presence? Um, I just felt like there was somebody around and I didn't feel good being here by myself. Okay. I right. just wanted to, you know, get out as soon as possible or try to avoid being the last one. Okay. Um, so I think we're both history buffs. We um, uh, got a little information about this house and thought it'd be fun to find out, you know, if there were any spirits connected to this house, since we are in an area that we're surrounded by different events in history that may have caused some spirits to be remain. So, um, right, so we want to get a feeling of the history of the house. Well, I want, to, I want to thank Maureen and Amy for, for bringing us out here. It's interesting. You have a beautiful place here, great history, and uh, we're, we're very much looking forward to uh, getting started. So after hearing all the claims to the house, we wanted to have a thorough investigation. So we wanted to get cameras set up on all the floors. So we have a camera set up down here covering two rooms. We have a camera upstairs in the second floor covering two rooms. And then we also have one camera up in the attic covering the whole attic. Okay, we're going to put a digital voice recorder in this room here because there are claims of children laughing. So we're going to be covering this floor area here and then also the attic. Alright guys, let's go dark. Once all the equipment was set up, everyone left the house and began discussing the plan for the night's investigation. At this exact moment, when no one was in the home, the digital voice recorder Jake had just placed in a room on the second floor picked up this startling EVP. We know that this area was settled, I believe, by the, the Lenape Indian Nation. Um, we know a lot of injustice was brought against your tribe. Um, you were here first, and the whites move in. Was this a motive for the murder, which occurred in this area? Did it upset you when the white settlers came to this area? Have you ever heard of Tom Quick? Give us a sign if you are familiar with the name of Mr. Thomas Quick. A knock. Walk up to the green light. That will let us know that you're in here. Holy Is that you? Ooh, it just got different in here. Hold on, let's I just, why don't we just, Jason, why don't you shut that light off? I'm uh, I just had a, um, I got goosebumps big time running down my back. Why don't you try to take a temperature right there, or see if there's a cold spot, or... It did just get colder in here. See wow. if you can get a reading right there. Wow, I got goosebumps big time. Was that you trying to make contact with us? If so, do that again, please. You didn't get that, did you? No. Sorry. Try to light up those green lights again. As we try to debunk the spike in our K2 meter, Jake continues to perform an EVP session. At one point he asked any entities in the room to walk towards the green light on the K2. A few seconds later the digital voice recorder picks up and Jake hears with his own ears 
what sounds like footsteps walking above us. If you were in fact the spirit that was killed by the Native Americans, please walk up to the green light. It's not, it's not like a, a breeze cold. It's no, like, it's, it's just like a steady. It's steady. Is yep. there, is like there a belt. draft coming in from behind you right, through the door? There, I'm spiking point nine, one oh, one oh, the, it's the, climbing. The unknown door behind you, Brian. Oh, right right behind drafts you. coming in at all? Check all the way around it. Is that light coming from over there, or is that your light? I feel breeze, but I don't think it's nuts. So. One point four. One point. Guys, is there something up above us? At all? Check all the way around it. Is that light coming from over there, or is that your light? At all? Check all the way around it. Is that light coming from over there, or is that your light? At all? Check all the way around it. Is that light coming from over there, or is that your light? I have an idea. Unless we, unless we, just what time? Uh, elevate it. No. What time did that happen? Did you get a text? Maybe. Oh no. It doesn't matter because it's still going. The cold thing is still. Yeah, that. that you know, that, I feel, right, I'll tell them. I'll tell, tell them, them to the text you. Text, yeah. Hey, we're gonna try something. Can one of you send Brian a text real quick? Put it down close to the. Thing. I, I was standing up here though. Yeah, he was there. Oh, you were standing. I yeah, thought you were kneeling. And I was standing. I can help it too. You guys put your phone off. Yeah. I, I forgot know. about it. <laughs> you forgot. I bet you that's what it was. It might have been. When were we down here? I got it at 10.23 from Sean. What time is it right now? It's 10.31. Did it move? Oh, there it goes. Ah, that's it. Shit. But that still doesn't explain the cold. I, could, I think that was just us. I, I don't think, think so. You don't think? <sighs> we, got, we, gotta, we gotta throw that out, because that, I mean, that's... It happened again with it. You got in one, so we can't count that. Are those children up here playing? We were told that they can hear children laughing up here. Are you having a good time? What games are you trying to play? Dude, I just... Yeah, I just caught all that. Dude. I'm feeling like spider webs. I have chills and I'm feeling cobwebs on my freaking elbow. Alright, record it. I got it. I'm gonna go over with some Melania. Are you trying to touch me? Oh, what was that? What? I'm gonna keep recording, but I gotta go back and check. I Dude, thought I saw like a black Dude, mist like, behind me. I wanna see if there's freaking. If there's around. spider webs over here. At the same time Jake is experiencing a cobweb sensation on his arm, Jason notices through the viewfinder of his camera what appears to be a shadow move across Jake's face. Upon further review, we ruled out the possibility that the shadow was caused by any of us or a car passing by on the street. All right, so we're up in the attic, and the claims up on the first floor and up the attic is that they hear children laughing. Laughing, so I was looking to contact both children. I was kneeling down over here. <sighs> felt like something was trying to touch me. It felt like a cobweb. I know that that's what we we see in here. That it feels like there's a, a, a spider cobweb on you. Um, started to get chills down my back. So thought that I felt something. Thought something was trying to contact me. But now, when we take a look with the flashlight, we can actually see. There were spider webs that were coming down to the ground and then out this way, so it was actually just a spider web. I, I you know, I, I, I was moving to get a closer. Because you can see your shadow when you got up, and I, I, I really think that it might have been like an arm or. Well, that's something I, I think mean, we'll let we'll let the tech department uh, take a look at that later. And... All right, we just finished the first walkthrough with uh, myself, uh, Jake, and Jason. I'm now going to go in with my brothers, Michael and Christopher. Uh, obviously, I know what happened on the first walkthrough. I'm going to be completely silent about anything that happened during the walkthrough with the Davis brothers and we're just gonna see what goes on during this walkthrough. What the frick was that? It sounded like... It sounded like a leaf like dancing on the floor. 
Yeah, like a... Why don't we sit in here? Just for a second. Put the right here. Okay, just put the K2 on the table. Maybe it was just a leaf. It could, that's kind of what it sounds like. It sounded like when you leaned back. On the wicket? Yeah. Did somebody sit in one of these seats? If someone is here, can you walk toward that green light on the on the uh, magazine there? That could have been it. What was that? Is Chris over there? Yeah. Oh, he's in that room. It sounded like he can't. Maybe. All right, I guess we'll. Cause I heard yeah, I guess it was that. All right. As I leave the house to retrieve a fully charged battery, Mike and Chris continue to perform an EVP session in the living room. At one point, Mike asks any spirits present if the TLC salon is their house. Immediately after Mike asks this question, the digital voice recorder captured a very eerie response. Was this your house? Is this still your house? Did you live in this house? Where's Chris? Oh, there he is. Did you die in this house? Move something in this room, make a noise. Show us that you're here. I don't feel anything, I don't feel. I mean, the K2 meters are not. Um, there's been no jump on it, either the K2 or the Mel meter. I don't feel, do you feel? I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel the temperature change, I don't feel a presence, I don't feel. Something else is down here, I just don't feel much of an instrument at all. Can I help you? Tell me you heard that. Yeah. I, I honestly thought it came from outside. Is anybody downstairs? This is your last chance with me. Touch the green light. Don't get angry. I think we'll, we'll try a more adversarial approach in a minute. While Mike, Chris, and myself performed an EVP session in the attic, the digital voice recorder on the second floor picked up this strange EVP. Is it the spirit of a young child reaching out to Christopher, the youngest member of the group? He said he thought he heard like a how do you describe it? Like someone sitting in the chair. Yeah, yeah, but we think that would have been the wind. But it could have been anything. We thought it was like a pitter patter, but we were sitting in that room again, and we kind of heard it like behind us, behind yeah. us, like almost like. Ah! Oh, is it there? Is it there? Yes. Oh, what is it? What is it? It's right there. It's right there. Where? Okay. Okay. Where? 
Oh, look, the raccoon. Was it the raccoon? Yeah. I turned around and the dead thing was in the garbage can. <laughs> Dude, we gotta move base. <laughs> move the base. Don't ever hug me like that. <laughs> you scared the piss out of me. All right, so we were setting up and Michael and Chris walked through and I noticed that I saw a big mosquito flying around. So I said to myself, maybe we should just keep this door shut to keep you know, uh, bugs flying around because you know how they look on the IR cameras. Um, we got wires running underneath the door and I wanted to make sure that we didn't pinch them and I wanted to see how far it could go. I uh, closed the door all the way till it clicked and uh, you can see here that you can push on it. It's not, it doesn't open up. Um, you know, I'm hopping, it doesn't. And I came back and the door was that far open. Huh. Okay, so I, I, you know, I don't know. It's the first thing, so it's definitely uh, interesting. And I, you know, we tried to debunk it. Can't explain it. So, uh, round two for us. Let's go. During their second time in the house, Jason and Jake perform another EVP session in the attic. At one point during the session, their digital voice recorder captures this strange and unidentifiable noise. Unless you can say something into the red light. Good things better come out of this. Tell the camera what we're doing. We are hiding from a raccoon. We're not hiding. We are <laughs> taking shelter. No, we're not taking shelter either. What do you call it? It's called a sabotage. We're planning our <laughs> sabotage. We're planning our counter attack. I'm going to wait for the raccoon to come, and then I want to get a good glimpse of how big it is. <laughs> I'm going to attack it. Up there it is. This is how we ghost hunt. I'm going to tell Bridge to get a, get a live trap out here. <laughs> or to get a garbage can to close it. <laughs> I think it's going to... I think it's going to... Oh no, it's them. Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> He's doing it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Is my face on it? <laughs> <laughs> what the that is the smartest raccoon ever. Oh. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Jason, you ready to call this? Let's call it. Alright, let's go lights on, alright? <laughs> Just went through the reveal. Exciting. And you know the, the clients couldn't be happier. Brian and I went down to the basement to, to really take a look at the EV, EVP footsteps, which uh, I don't to, to me were, were a bit eerie. And uh, you know, checking a door down there, looking for um, a, a temperature drop, which we fell, and and Brian and I were both caught off guard and felt you know the whole night during the experience, it felt as if we were being teased by something. And uh, once again, we're down there checking a situation, and we feel a knock right in our face. No explanation for it. It was almost as if we were being teased once more. Um, you know, what can I say? It, it's been a great investigation. Uh, I want to thank Maureen. I want to thank Amy. I want to thank Jim Bridge for uh, getting us here on location. And uh, we look forward to future investigations, possibly here in Milford, Milford or the entire uh, in, in the area. So, all right. <laughs>